Okay. Hi, everybody. Welcome to This Week in Medicine. It's January 3rd, 2022. I'm in my snow gear, so excuse me if I make this quick as I have to go outside and shovel the snow. Uh, it's been a fun snow day, but we're still dealing with Omicron. The Foxhall Foundation brings this update to you in the olden times before Omicron. Dr. Yamamoto could do his educational mission for the foundation, and we had audiences semi-masked, but no longer. Everybody should be masked. Omicron is extremely contagious. We are in a different pandemic. Again, this is from the Foxhall Foundation. We have a wellness center. We're still open. Uh, we're still doing nutrition consultation, and we're going to add some more classes this year. Uh, it'll be nice to get through Omicron first. So what came in the inbox this week to my inbox, Dr. Thomas's inbox? Omicron and school. Kids are headed back to school this week. Private schools tend to have testing requirements before you can go back to school. Um, for example, I ran into a family today. The kids all had to test with a PCR test before going back to school tomorrow. The problem with the PCR tests is you can be positive from a nasal swab PCR test up to 38 days or longer after the infection is over because you can retain bits of the genetic material in your nose that is not active genetic material, you're not contagious, but that swab will test positive. So instead, what we should be doing to determine whether or not our kids are contagious or not and can go back to school would be to do an antigen test if the antigen test is negative but their PCR test is positive, it means they probably had an infection sometime in the past couple of months, maybe even past couple of weeks, but they're no longer contagious. One thing I will say that the private schools have done is they've PCR tested the kids before they went home for spring or for winter break. And so if they were negative before they left, but positive now, then that does imply that they acquired an Omicron infection between the time of dismissal for winter break and present time. Nonetheless, was that infection acquired if they were asymptomatic five days ago, 10 days ago, 15 days ago? That's what's important to find out if we wanna control infection in the schools. I will also say that when this started three weeks ago and I had the slide that showed every single inbox message was Omicron, Omicron, Omicron. Um, at that time, it really did appear as though the teenagers were the harbingers of infection. They were the ones who sort of started it. Most of my messages came from families who said, my 13, 14, 15, 16 year old tested positive. Now the family has been exposed. And more of that happened over the winter holiday. So I do think that uh, the kids in high school tended to be the ones who were spreading it. I don't think it's because in our area, the kids aren't vaccinated. I think a lot of our high school kids are vaccinated. I think it's probably because they don't have the best masking behavior. And so that's how it's spread. Um, Omicron and elective surgery. Elective surgeries are still on. And I have told many of my patients, go ahead and do an elective surgery. Could you name a location where everybody was wearing an N95 mask so everyone was maximally protected against Omicron? Could you name a location where there was pervasive testing? In fact, anybody who came through the doors got tested. Well, that location is called a hospital. So right now, hospitals have a high state of vigilance. They're testing every patient admitted. They are all wearing N95 masks. Uh, at certain hospitals, especially the hospitals in our region, they're all mandatorily vaccinated. So if you want a safe location to be right now to not get Omicron, it would actually be a hospital because they have pervasive testing and universal masking and universal vaccination. So go ahead, do your elective surgery. Omicron and masks, upgrade your mask. You're hearing this over and over again. Unfortunately, not a sound recommendation yet from the CDC but many health experts are advising against cloth masks if you don't want to get Omicron. If you really don't want to get Omicron, an incredibly contagious respiratory virus, then up your mask game. Get a KN95 mask, get an N95 mask. Omicron and travel tests. Obviously, the past two weeks have been a disaster for travel, and there are many people who are stuck in certain locations and cannot leave because their test is not yet negative. I have a number of patients who are stuck, unable to fly, unable to return home 
because they got Omicron while they were vacationing, they have a positive PCR test. Again, don't get that test, get the antigen test. If your antigen test is negative, you should be safe to fly. But again, it's hard to leave your vacation spot if you have a positive test. Omicron in the fourth shot, so far there are no United States recommendations from CDC or FDA. This is a problem because in our area, many people did get a booster shot in September before it was recommended by CDC and FDA. So there are people who got a booster shot in September and want to know now, is it time for a fourth booster shot? There is no official recommendation on this. I have not seen any recommendations on this except for what's coming out of Israel. And that is not a United States recommendation yet. So no fourth shot. DC and Maryland are leading in COVID Omicron. There's been a 1500% increase in cases. We used to be 40th, 45th, 50th in the list of Delta infections. Now we're number one. DC is number one, Maryland is number one. This started three to four weeks ago. Might we have already peaked in infection? We might have, if not, maybe in the next week or two. Does our area have the highest travel from South Africa and the United Kingdom? Why did we become the hotspot? Especially because we have a highly vaccinated population, but we have such a high incidence of Omicron. Is it in fact because we have such a highly vaccinated population that we felt overconfident and therefore we're not wearing masks and there were mass events in the beginning and of December, end of November, where people were maskless? Music events, group meetings, school functions, where people were not masking because we had such low rates of Delta infection, but then somebody slipped in some Omicron and it spread like wildfire. I think that's a plausible explanation, but we'll see if there's some more data analysis on that so we can figure out how we became number one. There's also, as Governor Hogan said in Maryland, a persistence of the unvaccinated in the hospitals. So even though we have very high vaccine rates in Maryland, there are still unvaccinated people who have been hospitalized with uh, COVID illness. So it is still true. If you're unvaccinated, you're much likelier to be in the hospital. So at least our population is vaccinated. And frankly, I have not sent a single patient to the hospital for evaluation with Omicron. Part of that is because I have almost no unvaccinated patients. Part of it is because my patients are very health vigilant and take care of themselves. Um, so perhaps it really is true. If you take care of yourself, address all the issues of your health pyramid, you actually will weather the storm of infection. And I really do think that's true. So congratulations to my particular patient population. I think you were doing an outstanding job. The symptoms of Omicron, definitely a sore throat, very painful sore throat. This is probably mostly a bronchitis and not a pneumonia. There is some data that is yet to be peer reviewed that is very um, likely the case that this particular virus is unable to invade the tissue of the lungs that causes pneumonia. The bronchial tubes are what carry the air in and out of the lung tissue. The bronchial tubes do seem to be a great place for Omicron to infect, but not the lung tissue. Night sweats is a big symptom. So if you suddenly have night sweats, it's probably a good idea to check your antigen test the next day or check your temperature. You might have Omicron. Fever, of course, but sometimes a low grade fever. I have not heard of the 103, 104, 105. Of course, again, this is in vaccinated people and I'm not a pediatrician, so I don't hear much about unvaccinated kids infections. Body aches is still there. We had that with the original Delta. No big reports of lack of smell. We're not seeing a lot of people with what we call anosmia, which means you can't smell or taste. No big GI complaints. In the original round of COVID infection in March of 2020, there were a lot of people with diarrhea, stomach pain, nausea, complete lack of appetite. Um, there's a little bit of lack of appetite with Omicron infection, but it's not pervasive. There are also no significant blood test abnormalities. This data I am basing only on the patients that I have viewed in the emergency room, uh, not someone that I sent, but if they incidentally happen to have COVID, which is happening a lot, it doesn't look like the virus is causing systemic or total body disease. Part of the reason for the inability for Omicron to potentially not cause total body disease 
is that it can't access the bloodstream through pneumonia, through infecting the lung tissue. So there probably is some spread of this virus throughout our entire bodies, but not as much as with the Delta infection or the original COVID infection. Again, I'm bringing back this slide because it still applies, maybe even more. Um, the mass study that was published in the Proceeding of the National Academy of Sciences showed that certain mask interactions are much less likely to transmit respiratory illness. And it's even better than social distancing. So again, I'm reminding you about this slide. This is the person who is infected and masked and the susceptible person who's masked, but they're both wearing the FF mask, which is the N95 mask. And then here's somebody wearing the surgical mask. You can see that the risk, mean infection risk is 10% if you're wearing a surgical mask. 0.14% if you're wearing an N95 mask. So it's time to up your mask game. These kind of masks really do work and I don't just wear them at work. I wear them anytime I'm going out. Omicron testing is a bear. Why is it a bear? Because it, we don't have a lot of tests. So here are some of the ones that have been available, whether or not you can find them now. I can't tell you, they're hard to find. They're not in pharmacies. There are now quotas on how many you can order from Amazon. Uh, on Go is a COVID antigen test. QuickView, another respected COVID antigen test. Binax Now, uh, the Abbott COVID antigen test. And Elum, another COVID antigen test. These are the tests that you take at home. If you think that you have COVID right now and you wanna test to see if you're contagious. You can also do these tests if you're at day five, six or seven of your illness and you wanna see, do I still have antigen in my nose that I can spread? So that's when you get those tests. Um, you can also do the PCR test if you can find it. Uh, our local hospitals are not doing PCR testing for asymptomatic people or for uh, people going on uh, vacations. They're not doing them. They're only doing symptomatic people. And that symptomatic hospital-based testing is very limited because they're booked. Um, so if you think that you have it and you want a super sensitive test to tell you, do I have COVID, get the PCR test. Don't use a PCR test to get out of quarantine. A lot of people are doing this. That test could be positive as long as 38 days, maybe even longer. The 38 days is a number that I'm basing on the original COVID from March of 2020. We know that those people could have persistent positivity because the genetic material is not gone. Just because you're over your illness, just because the virus is dead, doesn't mean that you don't retain some of that genetic material in your nasopharynx and you could test positive. So don't use a PCR test to get out of your quarantine because you could be positive. If you want to get out of quarantine, as discussed by CDC, you could use an antigen test. If you have been asymptomatic, if you're not very ill and you think, I really don't think that I still have COVID and you want to get out of your quarantine because you have to leave, there is a protocol where you can do the antigen test on day five of your illness, five days from when you tested positive, five days of symptoms. If you are negative on the antigen test, then you are allowed by the experts to leave your quarantine, still wear the N95 mask for the next five days. So that would be until day 10. Don't use the PCR test for this purpose because the PCR test could be persistently positive for many weeks and you're not actually contagious. So if you want to use the antigen test to get out early from your quarantine, you can do that. You may need multiple days of testing. You may need to test day six, seven, eight, nine until you're negative, or it's acceptable to wait for a total of 10 days. Say I've been sick for 10 days, I'm no longer contagious, and then you don't have to antigen test because these antigen tests are hard to find. Remember Omicron and social groups, this definitely applies. The data that we saw from Oslo, the data we saw from Europe, it's true. If you're in a social setting, not wearing a mask, even with vaccinated people, you could get it. Omicron therapeutics in the outpatient. Antibody therapies, the traditional ones, Regeneron does not work against Omicron. This was largely halted due to the CDC data on Omicron. Unfortunately, there was a statistic that 70% or so of current infections were from Omicron. That was retracted a week or two later by the CDC, and it's more like 53%. 
So there may have been some premature canceling of Regeneron, especially in areas where Delta infection still exists, by this data from CDC that said that we had three quarters of our cases that were Omicron. It's not true, it's probably half, but then again, it depends on where you are. Here in our area, it's probably all Omicron. So Trovimab from GlaxoSmithKline does work, but we don't really have access to it. In the state of Maryland, it was being reserved for nursing homes and our local hospitals don't have access to it. Our infusion centers that traditionally were giving Regeneron don't have access to it. Evusheld is actually not a treatment. It's meant to immunize people who failed to respond to vaccination, who did not get antibody response from their vaccine shots. Again, it's approved, but how do you get it? I'm having a hard time getting it for my patients, and these would be patients who have cancer, who are immunosuppressed from autoimmune diseases. They could get this as a sort of substitute for a fourth booster shot, um, but accessing it right now is very difficult. Um, there is a proposed switch in treatments for the antibodies going from Regeneron to Citrovimab when Omicron is dominant in your region. And again, I think it's dominant for us here. We're not testing for individual treatment, so we don't know if you have Omicron or not. We're doing public health decisions, so we cannot tell you specifically if you have Omicron. Paxlovid has been approved, and I looked at the list of pharmacies that have Paxlovid. Um, there are no pharmacies in Montgomery County that have Paxlovid available. It's in other areas of the state of Maryland that tend to be low-served populations, um, Baltimore and other places where there are low uh, vaccination rates, but we do not have access to Paxlovid. It was not given to pharmacies locally. Again, let me just remind you, there really could be a silver lining from this. It could be it's not an extremely mild variant. If you've had Omicron, you know it's not extremely mild. But is it at least getting rid of the Delta virus, which definitely put people in the hospital and definitely caused pneumonia? It looks like that's happening. Again, get your N95 mask. Look for things like 3M. Look for the NIOSH, N-I-O-S-H, which means it's been reviewed and is an acceptable mask. There's NIOSH right there because there are counterfeit N95 masks. Um, but if you try to check for your NIOSH, you look that for a reputable mask, there are also many, many media stories right now on how to find a reputable N95 or KN95 mask. You can mask yourself and not get Omicron. Snow shoveling, that's why I'm wearing the hat. So today I did some snow shoveling. If you're doing snow shoveling today, remember, snow is not a big part of our area, usually until January or February. So be careful because every year, someone herniates a disc or pinches a nerve shoveling snow when they don't have stretched muscles. So what do you do? You can stretch during your snow shoveling. I'll stop every 15 to 20 minutes to stretch out my back. Stretch your gluteus muscles. Those are your butt muscles. Stretch your hamstrings and your calves. The whole line of muscles from your lumbar spine all the way down to your heels can spasm and tighten up when you're shoveling snow. If they spasm up enough, then you can have severe back pain the next day. So after you are done shoveling snow, remember to stretch, even during. Tony's tip of the week, please try to wear an N95 or KN95 mask when you come into the office. I know you're all vaccinated, but there are people who have immune system suppression. There are people who are on uh, medications that uh, prevented them from having a good immune response to their COVID um, injections. So try to wear a mask, not just for yourself and to protect yourself from Omicron, but for others. We don't have antigen testing in the office. We don't have real-time PCR testing. Our lab is just too slow to be able to get that back on time. At this point, it's probably better for everybody to try to do their own antigen testing and PCR testing at home. I know there is not a good supply of testing kits right now, um, but hopefully that'll uh, loosen up in the next week or two. Fourth shots of COVID vaccine have no CDC or FDA approval. So um, I would advise you not to call to ask us if you can get one because we don't have access to them and there's no approval for these yet. Hospitals locally do not have capacity for asymptomatic testing. So again, don't ask us to put an order in for you for the drive-through test if you have travel plans or if you were exposed to somebody who had Omicron. Really, we can't do that testing at the hospitals. The hospitals are overloaded right now. And really, even if I put the order in, it's unlikely you're gonna be able to get an appointment. Fast pitch, Omicron is here. Don't go to massless events. 
Uh, revisit your mask habits, upgrade your mask. Again, the K95 and then 95 is something that my whole family has been wearing for 18 months and we're doing fine. Stretch your leg muscles if you went out and shoveled snow today, which I'm about to do again. Influenza is here, so we have seen a couple of cases of it. It's not in huge numbers yet, but it's not going to be like it was last year where we didn't have any at all. So influenza will be here. You can get combined testing, uh, but again, this testing is probably going to be limited because of the limitations of how much testing we can do because of Omicron. Keep your health pyramid in mind this year. It's a new year, 2022. If you want to make yourself a New Year's pledge, make sure that you've done all these things on your health pyramid. Thank you for your attention. I know Omicron is stressing everybody out. My inbox is full, but if you have questions, feel free to send them. Thank you.